channel because you have these very serious like Mad Men, but the comic mm-hmm. book men's a very you know pawn shop great feel with a whole bunch of people mm-hmm. together. It's yeah, fun. yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we we felt the same. Are you kidding? Those were some of our arguments. Like, why? <laughs> that was my argument. Why? <laughs> I was watching the one last night where Ming is uh, there at the um, the flea market. Oh, that was the first one. Yeah. It wasn't the first one we recorded, but it was the first one they aired. So, yeah, Ming, hot dogs are for closers. And Johnson just picks up the stuff and is throwing yeah. it down. And that was all. Actually, he was doing that, and a guy came up, and he's like, that, that guy who, like, confronted Brian, that was real. Some guy's like, you don't do that to people. You don't do that to, to these people. And it's like. <laughs> you people. Like, what, yeah, these, seriously. These, like, these that, people. What, what, yeah, what, seriously. That's, what do you mean that's these people? racist. People. What's going on? Sorry, he was, he was standing up for me, though. <laughs> yeah, but in a racist way. <laughs> you leave these people alone. <laughs> I'm from Texas. Yeah. It's like, are you going to brand him? Is he yours now? <laughs> Yeah, I saw him later on, didn't he? I think he came in the store later on. He, he did. Like, he was trying guy. to sell all the crap that he couldn't sell at, at <laughs> yeah, the flea market. We didn't want I'm it. I'm like, nah, get out of here. <laughs> we didn't want it. So what's up, guys? Nothing much. Well, How no, are no. you? What brings you to this part of town? We we came for you guys. We okay. wanted to interview you and kind of get a gist of the podcast studio. We had met, I'm going to say, close to 10 months ago. Um, and you were slightly talking about, you know, we're talking about comic book men, but you're yeah. talking about the podcast. And I'm like... This sounds amazing. And you being, quote, unquote, right down the block, it just seemed like, well, let's get in an interview, Mike and Ming. Yeah, for sure. What this Absolutely. is all about. Yeah. So what do you think? Awesome. Um, this is yeah. awesome. <laughs> this is, this awesome. is really What cool. my man cave should look like. Right. So it looks phenomenal. Look at the pops and Captain America shield. And we've got Christian Slater signed poster over here. One of my favorite Christian Slater movies as well, Pump Up the Volume. Yeah, uh, that for, and Billy Jean, not Heather's, together. not Heather's. Oh, I like on. Heather's. Oh, well, yeah, Heather's but is like really, classic. I get really yeah. choked up because as a kid, being a, like a comic book fan and a skateboarder back when it wasn't popular, I always hated being bullied, and it's just like early movies like that. Like I like there's kind of the revenge portion of that, but I just feel like the bullying really brings me back to the late '80s, being bullied as a kid for right. reading like. G.I. Joe and Chris Star and Spider-Man. It just brings me... And they don't address that in the movie, like, being a nerd. But even they sort of do with, like, big fun and... and well, I'm going gonna, gonna to bully you for liking Chris Star, for God's sakes. I mean, my <laughs> God. Man. I'm kidding. I would... I, if you read comic books, you can read... I, I don't care what you read. As long as you read comic books, you were, you know... Of my breed, so you were you were in the clan. So. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. I mean, I got I caught enough crap reading Gen Thirteen and Grimjack, and uh, oh, I, I love <laughs> Gen Thirteen. Yeah. So did I, but you know, I, I'm still not living. Grimjack that was cool, but DV Eight. Oh man, well, yeah, DV Eight no, was, was pretty, not pretty good. Terrible. No, no, was, no, but you know, like Mew, Jason Muse always used to say, there's no such thing as a bad comic book. Especially if it was free. That's what he <laughs> liked. So. so preteen, dirty jean, ca- kangaroos. It's yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Kangaroos as, as in the shoes, right? Is that what you're referring to? No, it was one of those like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle shoot offs with oh, okay, right, right, right. adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters yes. and hamster vice, <laughs> right. Miami mice, and everything I could find in a quarter Micro bin. Mice when I was from a kid. Mars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those guys, they were, I yeah, remember they're... racing those little ones in the hallways yeah. like, in New York. It was like the kids <laughs> in the neighborhood would all meet up and everyone had one of the bikes and okay. we would just race those things around. What we, I find so funny about comic book culture is how mainstream it's become but how you were kind of i don't want to say alienated from everybody else for being a fan of that kind of stuff but people weren't into it so they didn't get it so they automatically you're corny you're a nerd you got picked on for it and all that kind of stuff because i went through all that crap too as a kid and it was just like i didn't understand the difference as i got older it's just like okay I'm not a sports person. I don't watch sports. It's not that I'm opposed to sports, Mm -hmm. but it's just like I never got into it. My parents never watched sports, so I never got into it. I'll watch sports with other people if they enjoy it, and I'll sit there and, you know, have fun in communal situations. Right. But I never remember anybody being bullied for liking sports. They never were. They never were. (laughs) No. and, And now it's like... You want to play all the video games when playing video games was strictly for nerds, strictly for geeks, strictly mm-hmm. for any number of, of things that we've 
I think adopted now to be like yeah geek culture. Uh, yeah, it was we didn't to adopt be, it. No, the mainstream they adopted, adopted it. it. Yeah, that's what mm. I say. It's like you know, first it started out as like subculture. And then it became pop culture, right. and now it's just culture. It's part of everything. It's that, mainstream. It's, it's, it's completely mainstream. Yeah. And, you know, you it's to be alive in this time with superhero movies is amazing. Just <laughs> For me, it's, fan, it's the most fantastic time to be alive. You see all these characters that I loved growing up, and now you're packing theaters with people that probably never even knew this stuff existed before. No, my father never heard of <clears throat> Guardians of the Galaxy and before he died he's like Guardians of the Galaxy. Wow, it's a good movie. And it's really weird. And here's the thing that that cracks me up the most is we've got Spielberg and you got Scorsese and you know Francis Ford Coppola all like shitting on right. like superhero movies and and Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And like this is not cinema. It's like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? And I love what the Russo brothers said. They they said, you know, when we were growing up in Ohio, we didn't call it cinema. We called it the movies. Right. You went there to escape. These are the purest form of escapism that you can get. You in the depression, the main form of entertainment was going to the movies. You know, to get away from whatever was you know kicking your ass. Right. You mentioned Mad Men before. Mad Men. Whenever Don Draper was under stress, he would go to the movies. Mm. And he would it would turn his mind off, and he could get out of himself. And then he came up with that billion dollar idea, you know. Mm. Um, granted, he went to ashrams too, but or ashrams, <laughs> or however the hell they say. It. Um, but for us now, we, Ming, and I always knew that comic books were cool. Now people are getting to see it like on the big screen because I think that technology developed, you know, right. and, and it caught up to where. You can have Wolverine on screen, and it, he doesn't look ridiculous. Yeah, he, you yeah. know, I mean, I don't know That's if he can true. pull off the the yellow suit, but you know, it. They showed I, the yellow suit. They yeah, opened up the briefcase. Yeah, and there it is. And it would be cool if if Jackman was in the yellow suit just once, and he might be if they they do that whole uh, Hulk versus Wolverine. We thing. were just, just talking about that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're at awesome. McDonald's nerding out, and people yeah. are looking at us like, what are you talking about? Well, we were about? super loud, too. It was like three people in there. We were the <laughs> loudest ones, so go figure. When you guys started podcasting 2000, was it nine? Uh, technically 2011. Kevin started in 2007. Uh, that was Tell him Steve smodcast? Dave came, came around late 2009. Yeah, Smodcast started in 2007, like way before, pretty much way before anybody even knew what this stuff was, what podcasting was. I remember reading it and I'm like, what is he doing? Podcasting? Like, yeah. really? Yeah, what is like, some I... kind of radio show? But I was like, oh, I can pull it up on a web browser and, and then people start listening to it. And I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. He's, you know, he's talking about fisting dolphins on the first episode. <laughs> and, um... I mean, everybody's got a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then everybody. He, yeah. And everyone right. should. That's, yeah, but that's back then the it was him and like Ricky Gervais was big back then. And that was pretty much it. And Adam Carolla Adam and Carolla. Uh, Joe Rogan. I mean, those were the – and Mark Marin came a little bit later and, and, you know, made his bones. But, I mean, now it's it's across all spectrums. Yeah, now they're huge. Like, you know, um, the Smodcast podcast, or it was so known within the podcast yeah. universe. Joe Rogan as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like, he's, And he's got – you guys familiar with um, Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Two Bears, One Cave. That just – oh, my God. Them two as best friends is the most hilarious thing that I've ever seen. <clears throat> I love that podcast. But, yeah, I like the portability of it. Like, you can listen to it or watch it anywhere, anywhere now. Anywhere. You don't have to be at your radio. You can be anywhere and stream this stuff. Put it on. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that extends the recording. It. You can record these anywhere as well. We've, uh, yeah, yeah, we've been yeah. in some crazy places, uh, airplanes, um, you know, bars. And a I mean, we said we just down in New, New Orleans. That was weird. That was <laughs> fun. We go on these road trips. We're like, we need to put a camera in the car, yeah. mm -hmm. and just film our conversations because we get into some pretty ridiculous conversations. Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, we did that uh, when Kevin shot uh, Jen's Not by Reboot. We had to drive down to New Orleans, and uh, we had a camera on us. It's like, why much. not get a dash Might cam well. and turn it around yeah. and you just film yourself? And that to me. We got to do that. We got to get a camera the, specifically yeah. for that GoPro. Something you know. There's we so drove many through the songs I make up in car rides that I just cannot remember. Yeah. Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were trying to find a, an abandoned psychiatric hospital, and just we pull up on this kid who's skateboarding. We're like, hey, kid, 
Where's the abandoned? And the, the guy, the kid's like, uh, I gotta go now. And yeah, I, don't, just, I don't know, creepy old man. Uh, it was yeah. him. It, it was, was him me. asking. I was like, was that that? I'm I mean, calling my dad. Yeah, I mean, look, just look. He just he looks like a child molester, and it was a white fan. <laughs> That's bullshit. That that I one, do not. The one that you're, I look like a cannibal, but not a child molester. Uh, I, I respectfully disagree. <laughs> no, no, you were you were like you had your your face pressed up against the back windshield, so it's like that kid's like, holy crap. Oh, there's no other windows in it. No, no. Oh, the window is fan. <laughs> just, yeah. Like, ah. it was, yeah, it was a white. And it said free white. candy on the side, so, you know, we were safe. Uh, Sandusky shuttles. Yeah. Back to the psychiatric Too hospital. soon. Yes. Yeah, so we started uh, a little bit after you did, about 2011. And where were you Where were you recording then? Like, what are those early shows? Back at the comic book shop. Yeah, it was back in Jay's Silent Bob Secret Stash. It was a perfect place to record. We had a poker table back there. Uh, we were playing a lot of Hold'em tournaments around that time. And uh, Tell them the, Steve uh, Dave was doing it out of there, too. So Yeah, and Kevin would record back there whenever he was in town. And, uh, yeah, it just made sense to do it right in the comic book shop where we were anyways. Right, because there's, like, a back room behind everything, right? That's no, it's not a back private. room. It's, it's a back area. Back, back area. area. Yeah. Because they show it in the show. Yeah. I've never been to the Secret Sash to anyone. For well, sure. You're I here. Hear, we're, 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 yeah, going, we're, we're, we're going today. Yeah, we're yeah. going today. But, ten um, minutes away. <laughs> Ming and I were talking about this from back in the day. And, again, this, me and Ming have been in so many places, and I never met him. But they had the Chasing Amy premiere in Middletown. Yeah, was at that, the UA. Um, yeah, the United Artists. Uh, it was there was a little. Was it two screen cinema? I think or it, it was, was really a, tiny. It was a tiny. Cinema. No, the UA. No, really? No, because yeah. there was. Or was uh, it just one? No, there were ten. Ten. Was, are you talking about the one in Middletown where the Target is now? Yeah. No, that was a, a tenplex, man. Ten. Okay. Oh. So yeah. Way you, smaller than that. When I was like twelve years old, they used to go in uh, for the the matinee, like ten o'clock in the morning, and I'd stay until midnight. You know, going and seeing theater, all these. Theater, oh, theater yeah. hop. That's what we did back then. Yeah, because right. that's what we hopping. did. There was no assigned seating. You, right. you went in there, and if no one noticed that you were, you know, slipping into all the movies, you got away with it. Yeah. S- especially in the summers when you weren't in school, mom would drop me off oh, on yeah. the way to work, stay there all day, and pick me up. And yeah, that was we, fun we, to be yeah, a kid. I, yeah, I, I saw Creep Show like three times that day. It was great. Yeah, that was cool. So that was way back in '97. Uh, they had just wrapped shooting. It was kind of a combination. Uh, kind of website fan screening slash cast and crew screening. Well, Ming, you ran the View Askew. There was the website, yeah, the website right? Web yeah. Board, yeah. With the with the message boards, yeah. and I used to be on the message boards all the time. I went on this is like the greatest idea, and and Kevin would pop up, and and Brian Johnson, and like Vincent Pereira, and it was just great to be able to interact yeah. with the people in the movies. And that was kind of your brainchild. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Kevin's whole Kevin's initial idea was to have some kind of chat room. He wanted some way to interact with fans around the world, which was very, very progressive of him. There was no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram. There was no way to interact with anybody famous, uh, or much less anybody in Hollywood, or your favorite filmmaker, or your favorite filmmaker who came out with a dirty, uh, dirty language black and white movie a few years ago. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he had a. Uh, he he had a strong desire to communicate with his fans, and uh, he saw the internet as the ultimate way to do it. So, uh, I but I was like instead of a you know a, a, I was like a chat room would require you to schedule time, you know, uh, large amounts of time to interact with people in real time. I was like, why, I, why don't we just put up a message board and you go and answer questions whenever you want? You right. can answer one, you can answer ten, you can answer a hundred, whatever. And uh, I thought that that uh, that ultimately worked out really that was, well. That was the like the origin of the AMA. So pretty much, yeah, 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 yeah because yeah, yeah. you would be talking to other USQ fans, and all of a sudden you'd come back in the morning, and Kevin's talking yeah. about all your stuff, and you're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then you would make friends, and uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I think people got married. Yeah, uh, met there, met there, and got married. It was pretty. It was pretty awesome. So, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty crude looking text based message board but it uh you know later on like 20 years later it looks exactly like reddit does now so i don't know where my check is if i get lost in the mail <laughs> but i want some of that reddit money i mean having access to people of higher level in hollywood you know actors directors writers because of you know social media and you know they're accessible now people are like yeah, yeah not, they started not that calling somebody's agent to get a conversation with this yeah, person. No. If you're Unfiltered, luck of the draw yeah. is that they're going to answer you or talk to you, it's right there. 
Yeah, and, unfiltered, immediate. Yeah, and, uh, mm-hmm. yeah it, it was kind of the birth of social media for I sure. I mean, look at look at when you follow stars on Instagram. You know, you comment on their photo, they might write back to you. Yeah. It, 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 it's it's a thing. You don't have to like write an email. I, uh, and hope that they get it. I, I love that we've <clears> become so. I don't. I don't know if I call this advanced, but you can get blocked on Twitter by the president now. <laughs> you say something he doesn't like. Yeah, like really? the president will block you. So surprising. Yeah. Right? Oh uh, my god! I have to get that. I have to make that happen for myself. I don't right? think it's that hard. That's what she you said. probably could just say hello in a block. <laughs> it doesn't I mean, matter what you say. I mean, you gotta say something, but a little more controversial than that. But yeah, he's been you know what I mean? block he's, he personally gets... block people, citizens, his citizens of his great country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then people, you know, the the people who are on the block list are like, "Why am I getting a uh, you know audited by the IRS? What's going <laughs> on here?" <laughs> uh, yeah, Why there's guys in black suits across the street from my house? Hi. The car is parked out there. Yeah, there's a windowless van out there, and Ming's got his face pressed up against the back window. <laughs> <window. laughs> so so when, the, when did you guys, when would this start becoming like a thing? Like, when was this coming in the backyard for Shared Universe, and you're like, you know, we need something local, something where people can come in? Because if you look at your, your dynamic, it's like, and you put it right out there. We're here for new podcasters. Yeah. We could teach you stuff if we want to know. Yeah. If you're advanced podcasters, it's great because you could even come in and we have the resources mm-hmm. here for you. So when did that genesis kind of come about? Was it when you're in the back of the comic book shop and you're like, what else can we do to bring this more forward? The, the real origin story came when a uh, gentleman came up to me and said, uh, this is um, about season four or five. Season four, I Something think. Something like that, yeah. Season four of Comic Book Man, and we were on hiatus and we were – uh, gonna start shooting in about like two months and he said what would you do if the comic store went away and you know your your television show went away what what would you want to do just off the top of your head say it right now and this is it was like really weird that he he popped this thing at me and I was like off the top of my head I'd want to open a podcast studio because Ming and I were talking about it and we'd been doing it for like Five or six years, five five years at that point, and you know he's like, we're we're in the infancy of podcasting. We're still in the infancy of podcasting. I mean, it's been like twelve years, and it's still nobody's tapped. You know what the ultimate podcast is going to be. So um, Ming and I were talking, like you know, making plans for later on the the next step, and I said to this guy i'd open a podcast studio he's like where and i said ideally in red bank but you know monmouth county for sure because we're in in the sweet spot new york philly and you know we're, we're right here on the east coast where everything's happening yep, and yep. Uh, he said let's take a walk and we went outside we took a walk and there was this empty building. He, and I, I said i would love to do it right there because it was three floors and a basement and I said, that's my ideal podcast studio right there. We, we could split it up into six you know, studios that would be going full time. Um, we would have, you know, second floor would just be office space. And the third floor is like an apartment for people who wanted to come in and, and be our special guests, you know, and they stay up there. You know, they fly in from Vegas and they, they stay there. Like a whole and, floor of a, like a green room. That yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the bottom that's would have nice. been like a cigar bar where people would have come in and just been like chilling down That's there so idea. i was like i would love that now i mean we found out that the building cost 1.5 million dollars without <laughs> renovations and it was just like a hulk and he's like tell you what start small and that's when we had our first studio and it was just me and me we we weren't renting the space out we were just podcasting from there and we put up all our stuff and it was really cool and we call that fraudulent studios <laughs> because the gentleman who asked me that question, he's like, look, I need a um, – and I'm going to give him a shout-out, Todd Puma. Todd Puma, you are the man. Um, he rented the space. He's like, you guys take this. I just need a mailing address for my business. He's like, podcast, then have me on every once in a while. That would be cool. So uh, he was paying rent to the guy, to, to our landlord, who didn't own the building anymore. He, he had owned the building like years before but he had sold it and he came around and he was renting it out and the true owners were like what the fuck are you doing 
Like, what's... <laughs> oh, man. He's like, squatters. Yeah, guys. exactly. You guys are squatters. Get the hell out of my building. And Ming and I were going to squeeze him for some money. Like, yeah, we'll get out when we feel like it. But we're like, all right, we got 20 minutes to get the hell out of here. So yeah, they're could... literally taking a wrecking ball. To yeah, the, the, the ball came up and they're like, hey, what's up? Uh, you're you're going to die if you stay up there. So we're like taking all our stuff out of there. And uh, so that was our fraudulent studios phase, which actually it was great because, you know, it, it gave us a taste for what we wanted. Right. So like three months later, we found this place and we came in here, started to slowly build it up. Um, you know, we got day jobs, so we're, we're doing everything, you know, at night and we finally get it around. And this is the funniest thing because uh, we had our um, our open house and it was around Christmas time. And huge success. A lot of people interested in coming in and doing podcasts. Our first official podcast was New Year's Day. Yeah, uh, 2018. 2018. And my wife was like, you know what? Let's start off the, the New Year right. Let's podcast on New Year's Day. He was in town. I was in town. We all agreed to come. And we come in and we, we take the elevator up and we hear this, like someone showering in the, um, in the hallway. We're like, what the... What's going on here? There was a leak. <laughs> there was a pipe had burst on the fifth floor, and we actually saved the building because we came in and uh, were podcasting that day because there was nobody else. Right. They yeah, wouldn't have whole, found it until the next day. The whole building would have flooded. And the whole Everything would have been would have destroyed. Flooded. Everybody, wow. Everybody's office would yeah, have been this gone. This would have looked like a huge aquarium, you know, with a uh, little diving guy in, in the bottom, you know, <laughs> next to an anchor. Um, we and got some free rent out of that. That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, no, we, we you would didn't. think, right? You saved you the whole th- couple yeah. of months. Um, the goddamn no. building. Mm. But they, uh, they kind of let us do whatever we want here. Yeah, now. we're so yeah. You know, we, we're, we get rock star access, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> and then from there, it just took off. And you know, we're we we do want this place to go twenty four seven. I mean, that's kind of unrealistic. You know, Ming has to sleep sometime. Not really. <laughs> I don't sleep. <laughs> Know, every yeah. time I get, try to get in touch with you, you are you are a madman. It's like you are flying all over. You yeah. were stuck in Michigan. Yeah, I was it there for the snow? And I was there for Mich- yeah, Michigan. I went out to L.A. recently. Uh, yeah, I'm heading out to Houston a couple weeks. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I I like traveling. I don't like to sleep still. on the plane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even plane. even before that, uh, you know, we we would get people either coming in the store or at conventions, going, "Hey, man, I, I love your podcast. Uh, I've been thinking about starting one. What do I need to do?" And we we would give them a very quick lesson about what kind of gear to get or answer their questions, but it it, uh, it wasn't in depth enough. Uh, you know, it, it was kind of like, hey, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if we had a space and we could teach classes and really show how to people uh, show people how, how this is done and all the stuff they would need and give them adequate time for them to learn. And uh, so that's that's eventually what happened. How um how popular are these classes? And do, do people? I'd want to say. Are, how do I put this? Are they able to take your classes and really go off and oh, watch yeah. a really yeah, successful show? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Show? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we impart with them every you know ten years of knowledge, and in, uh, into a two hour class. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's split up into two parts. We, we we impart our knowledge, answer any questions for the first hour, and then the second hour, uh, we actually record their first show. So Which, it's tra- it's it's hard to hard to teach a podcast class than that actually podcast. So right, yeah. right. It's it's really advantageous because again, like you were saying, anyone can podcast anywhere. You just grab a microphone and you know kind of hook it up. But it's nice to have some sort of podcast university. Yeah, so for speak. sure. Yeah, like do's and don'ts. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, and it's a lot of it's common sense. A lot of it is just getting in front of that microphone. And you know, I I like to think of it this way: that when we they do their first podcast it's like they've got training wheels on they've got ming and me steering them in whatever direction they want to go like they tell us where they want their podcast you know i want to do this this and this and then we just make sure that they stay on track yeah it's nice to have a studio though (laughs) it's got to be the sweet spot to know that you have a dedicated space at all times um we have a space that we're working on that was kind of just gifted to us, right? Like yeah, he's really uh, hooking us up with a place for us to actually film and record whatever we want. Shout out to Mark Fenton. Yep, uh, <laughs> Handmade Art Studios, and um, we haven't moved in there fully yet. We're still 
in the process of, of, of getting things set up the way we want it, getting, you know, audio gear yeah. and, and all the things that we need. Because we want to do it right. We Right now we're just, you know, cell phone footage. Right. We, we want to do it right, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't want to invest in things that we're unsure of. We don't want to put the money out if we're going to not see the type of return that we're looking for. Sure. Because you might buy all this high-end equipment. But then if it doesn't take off the way you anticipated, you're out all that money and you're not going to see a return. Yeah, and a lot of that is uh, trial and error. Uh, yeah. Luckily, Best Buy and Amazon have very liberal return policies. Yes, they do. So <laughs> if you want, if, uh, you know, if there's a mirrorless camera or something you want to use and it's not to your liking, yeah, re- send it back, man. Yeah. Like, we're it not, just didn't work right. Yeah, yeah we're not going to say shout out to Best Buy for your liberal return policy, but shout out to Best Buy for your <laughs> liberal return policy. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the ultimate kind of proving ground is uh, yeah, Best Buy and Amazon. Uh, but beyond that, I check out you know YouTube reviews. People are reviewing every piece of equipment yeah. ever made, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll compare it to you know maybe something that might be lower end. That you're like, oh, that's good enough. You know, I don't I don't need to spend six hundred. I can spend three hundred on this. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of mm-hmm. trial and error, or just asking around really. And uh, having the dedicated spaces, yeah, it's huge. Uh, we were lucky to have the back of the comic book store, pretty much whenever we wanted. But um, especially b- before the store opened. Or definitely after hours, but a lot right. of people don't have that, and we're—I mean—we're kind of—we're banking on that. In fact, uh, you can record in your kitchen, your basement, your spare room, mm-hmm. but it's not ideal. It's, no, I mean, I don't ideal. like. I don't want to have to clean up when I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I want to set up and be set up. Uh, I used to do a live broadcast Facebook show right. from my friend's apartment. In his living room. All right, so you have to check so the li- gear out there. Well, no, not and... even that. He would leave everything set up. But okay, it's, it, it's also his living space. Right, exactly. So he kind of <laughs> like a, live yeah. over the course of the next five, six days after I did it. Plus, we had a lot of. He was using a, a program called OBS. Yep. And every time it would update, I'd go show up on Thursday at like seven o'clock at right. night because my show, my show used to go live at nine. Right. And I'd have you know local guests come on. That were, you know, the projects they were working on. Sure. They were in a band or whatever. And I did it kind of like um, like a Tonight Show kind of sure. feel. The only difference was it was live all the time. Like, the, I remember the one episode, I used to run commercials and stuff. Right. And we, you know, turned the mics off. But for some reason, when OBS updated that day, the mics wouldn't shut off. So every time we're running fake commercials, because I used to put my own ridiculous stuff up yeah. there just to make it seem like that. We'd have to sit there and literally be quiet for like five minutes yeah. straight. And, <laughs> you know, it got to be a little frustrating like that. And um, I always was talking about I really want a space that we can set up and just leave everything the way it is. And when I talked to Ryan about it and he had his friend Mark that actually had extra space and we went to look at it. And the sound in there is like there's it's dead. Like he's got super thick walls. Yeah, it's great. everything. The, the do- noise absorption in there is amazing. And as soon as we looked at it, we were like, oh, this is definitely going to be where we film yeah. what we're doing. Because he said, you do whatever you want up here. Like, we went there to set up at one point, and, like, we were afraid to move things because he's got an art studio. So these things looked like they were in the middle of being painted or whatever. And he was like, no, no, just move things. We were like, can you just come and show us what we can do? With <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to be touching I don't want to break stuff. your I'm not stuff. Gonna your, he's like, your, you, your you your can't stuff, break yeah. anything. I'm like, yeah, this stuff, some of this stuff looks oh, like it I, can be broken. I can break anything. Yeah, right, right, right. right. expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> And he had a huge table just like this already up there yeah. and, and set up. So we were like, everything's coming together. I had chairs, you know. I bought a huge, gigantic green screen that we could hang up behind us because yeah. we're going to have, like, different kinds of backgrounds and whatever. Um, do you want to ask because you were obsessed in the car? Oh, how was the Funko place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Which one are you talking about there? HQ and Everett? The HQ and Everett. Oh, my I, God. I, when I was re-watching stuff, I was looking, I was like, oh, I'm so jelly. I wish I was there. Yeah. Oh are, you a fa- you're, are you a fan? Are you a collector? I, have you're a, a, you're I, have, f- I see some that I have in here. You're, like a, you're, you're a fanatic, if you will. I have those in there, and my girlfriend is also into Funko, oh, so man. we how have a, them everywhere. How many would you say you have total? Ballpark. Maybe about 75 or something. Oh, okay. It's taking up a wall. You're in your okay. infancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still short. I'm still yeah, short. Yeah, yeah, I met someone. They're like, yeah, I got 1899. I'm like, 1899? They're like, yeah, they were, we're looking for that one to make it 1900. <laughs> wow. Like, Actually, they should just 101, make it an even 2000, yeah. for God's yeah. sakes. What's the matter with you? Yeah, <laughs> but that's what they were at. They were literally at 1899. Yeah, there was, we were just starting off because before I was like, n- now she she encourages it. She's like, oh, well, look at that one. It's on sale. Get that one. Yeah, I have <laughs> a few. Like I, I think there, it really blew up the the, the pop 
craze. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Like, there's a pop for everything. And, you know, I have several. You yeah. know, my kid, he likes to collect certain ones, too. But we're not, like, walls of them. We have lots of stuff that we collect, but we don't have... I don't even have the space for the stuff that I collect currently, let alone more stuff that's a whole series to be able to put anywhere. So, um, but I see a lot in here that I'm, I am impressed with that. Uh, the Simpsons one is, is definitely really cool. Kang the Kang and Kodos. And Kodos. Yeah, that is definitely they came a out really with the, cool uh, one. 11 inch baby Yoda. I plan on getting that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. going to get that. <laughs> so it's a pretty amazing place. Uh, you know, it's kind of like as if Disney and Funko, Got together and uh, it, opened up a retail store. It, I see the big Godzilla Disney they and, had it in the uh, the Batmobile. Disney like, oh, and every awesome. place else had like an orgy, and this is their offspring. They had a litter <laughs> of everything because they had and uh, Brian Mariotti, the uh, president. That's I spell I pronounce his name right. Yeah, right? absolutely yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Love Brian. Brian's great, but his office is all pop culture stuff, and he's a lunchbox guy. He had. Uh, and, and a Hanna Barbera guy, he's huge mm -hmm. in a Hanna, and especially the um, the lesser known Hanna Barbera Grape characters. Ape. Oh, he had Grape, Grape oh, Ape, Ape. 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 He had the Grape Ape Wheelie. lunchbox. Oh, oh my God, Wheelie wow. and the Chopper bunch. Of course, he had all those things. Uh, everything that you can imagine. And you're looking around, you're going, "Holy crap!" And he had all the Batman's from uh, Japan. Oh. He had these. Just there were porcelain and they were they looked like they should be hanging on a christmas tree in some <laughs> demented dimension uh th these were gorgeous and the the tin toys he was a tin toy fanatic too mm. or is a tin toy fanatic he's, he's still with us he's, yeah. he's a great guy um <laughs> but his entire office is all these things and like almost no fun goes around except for the, like the prototypes that he's approving and i'm like holy crap I, i'm like i died and went to heaven this guy <laughs> gets me yeah and he's a collector he's a fan and uh yeah his office is one that one uh, that i wish I, I i wish to have one day instead of walls is all display cases lining hmm. like yeah. every That's every wall awesome. surface in his office it's pretty impressive um, but uh, that's uh, you know I saw that I was like man this that I mean no wonder they're so successful, they care about the fans they're collectors they're right details matter to them that's yeah the thing. one so, of us yeah. I, I <laughs> never... that, that, that's that's what it is if you are in the culture and you start something about the culture you're gonna be detail oriented in mm -hmm. it because you 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 would want it's this as a fan you. of course so you want to deliver this to the fans and that's right. you know right. knowing someone's in charge that has that. When you when you like something and you collect something, <clears throat> it's just to get this certain item. It's so pure, and you just love it. And you're just like, oh. And people are just like, I don't get it. Like, don't you have five Spider-Man figures? It's like, yeah, but this is a different one. It's still Spider-Man, but it's different. You're, this you're, is the Iron Spider. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with it? Right, Did you see that the suit's a little bit different? Right, there's the, the Spider symbol home. on the front. It's different. This is the end of the Spider-Verse. This is, uh, you know, this uh, Spider-Man noir. You know, the, yeah, this yeah, is Todd McFarlane. This, all that. this <laughs> one is, um, this is Ross Andrew, for God's sakes. What's right. wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, my Can't spider, you see? My spider Idiot. ham. Right. Yeah. Right. Spider ham. Yeah. When you When you zero in on the thing that you love and getting... As much of it as you can, because I, I loved Spider-Man. When I got into comics, probably around 1990 um, was when I discovered it. But I didn't discover it through the books. I discovered it through, remember the, the comic cards that they used to have? Sure. Yeah. I discovered it through that. And I was just like, what are all these awesome characters? And like, That's how I got you know, it. I, I, still I turned over the back and I read about all these characters. Like, oh man, this guy's got all these powers. It's so cool. And then I got into the X-Men and the X-Men cartoon came on. And just, I dove headfirst into... Collecting. I used to save my allowance money. Uh, once a month, I got to go to the comic book store. I'd be in there for like, my dad was always waiting in the car, so I always felt pressured because he wanted to get the <laughs> hell out of there. And I'm just like trying to browse. And then I started, you know, buying the books. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to know more about Spider Man. I want to know more about the X Men. So those were the two lines that I was really familiar with. with Lightly yeah. familiar with the Avengers at that time. Um, wasn't super familiar with the Guardians of the Galaxy, but I knew of them. Well, there was like ten years where they didn't yeah. publish a comic book. They oh, those Jim Valentino years though, the early nineties. I remember that book. That, they were outstanding. Yeah, but from like nineteen seventy right, it was not the to nineteen eighty eight. You know, they appeared in one panel of one comic, and it was a She Hulk. Mm -hmm. And it's only because John Byrne threw threw them in there as like 
an afterthought or or like a little personal joke. So I was like, holy crap. That whole series was like that. Like Howard yeah. the Duck popped of up course, for yeah. an adventure. Exactly. And it's like, oh, my God. So you're like, that is so insane that, you know, this thing that is so huge now was so – like nobody gave a rat's ass about, and nobody was clamoring to see the Guardians of the Galaxy. Me, <laughs> well, you maybe, but uh, it's uh, Ming's pulling it up now. Where, where you got it? You got it? I don't know. I don't know if you see it here, but uh... Uh, no, it's just one, one little panel. I'll find it. Uh, Keep talking. Guardians. Uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah, I mean, there was. You're like I, you are familiar with Guardians because they they reference them, but they never yeah, showed they, them. Yeah, and they were. Uh, this is the when you came around when you started um, reading comic books in the '90s. That's when the big boom for uh, trade paperbacks came out, and they started collecting like, yeah, a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, and you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. So, that was a niche thing back then, like a trade paperback. You're like, I guess I could collect that, but stories were more self-contained back then. So you didn't have to read six issues of a book to get one story. You pick up Spider Man. He had a whole adventure in one mm-hmm. issue. Yeah, it's done in one. It up. And yeah, they did the same thing with um, like Marvel Team Up, where it'd be mm-hmm. he met one. There might be a string going through, a, a thread going through all of his books, but you know it was a new guy coming in. You know, mm-hmm. it's like oh, mm-hmm. it's the Vision. Oh, it's right. he's teaming up with Doctor Doom. They oh. pop in. They pop in as like a special guest mm-hmm. in a comic book, and you get familiar a little bit with this chunk of the character at this point, but. Then, if you really like that character, go seek where that character mm-hmm. came from, and then yeah, you find more stuff. And what what happened for me was I was all into the Spider Man, all into the X Men, and then I got a little older, and I was like, "What is this Spawn character? Who is this?" Oh, I love mm. Spawn. And when I discovered Spawn, I was just like, "Whoa!" Like, and then the HBO series started with the animated feature, and oh, that just blew me away. I mean, we were talking about that Keith too. David. The, Keith David, the voice, just he's the perfect Spawn voice, and. I don't know how I feel about what Todd's talking about now with bringing the Spawn, another Spawn movie, but like, he's like an entity. He's not really, I don't know. It sounds they're weird. Trying, they're trying to make him like into the Spectre where there's always been mm. this. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, he wants to do it no matter who's going to help, help him or not. So more power to him. But I'm just like. A little confused of the approach. I mean, well, if you look at all the uh, the image comics, they were all pastiches of something. Like Supreme was Superman without um, without morals. Uh, Young Blood was the X Men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and with the little Titans thrown in, right? No. And you had uh, Stormwatch was Shield, but with superheroes. If they had their own little team, and then Spawn. I'm like. Spawn for the longest time I was like Spawn is the epitome of uh, I, I, for me I'm like he's the only one that doesn't have his own pastiche and then I'm like wait a minute that's not true and because I I started to read a little bit about it and I'm like wait a minute it's a specter what's going on here you know he, he dies and he comes back it's the specter so I'm like wow that's not really original but what are you gonna do <laughs> I mean but I like Todd Todd's a he's a good guy and yeah. I mean it's as original a character as you're going to get in the Image universe. He is <laughs> my favorite artist for comic book drawings and stuff like that. I loved his uh, Spider-Man take when he did the spaghetti no. string. No. Oh. You like Spider-Man? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> but when he drew Spider-Man, I was re- uh, really appealed to me, um, especially when he changed up the webbing mm. to do that spaghetti string webbing. I think that that webbing is so... Why wasn't that from the beginning? You know and, what I mean, like, and he embraced the under the arm webs, which yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah, let go out of style yep, for yep. a long time. I was like, I liked seeing that in um, Far From Home. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's nice for for the for the fans. I mean, other people would look at it and just it's a passing fancy, but for the true fans that know these things existed or exist, to give it to us is just like thank you so much for that. Like. And it's, you, the, it's the little things. And you gave it a purpose. He collides with them. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. were saying in the car they should put the Ghostbusters and the new Ghostbusters movie with the, with the uh, ape in it. <laughs> yeah, like the cartoon with the ape. They could do it so brilliantly because if they have a scenario where there's, like, you know, ghosts on the loose or whatever, you just give a little throwback by having, like, you know, this ghost car with three of the ghost characters as that. <laughs> Don't explain any of it. Yeah. And then just, it's just there. 
Bob Burns as Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Kong. Wow. I gotta go. and, and Forrest Tucker was famously... Uh, F Troop. F Troop, oh, yeah. but also the second uh, largest guy in um, Hollywood after Milton Berle, supposedly. If you know what I'm saying. I know ah. what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're swinging. Yeah. <laughs> no, you see That's where he's the... swinging. I'm telling you. Yeah, he was. Uh, that was one of. I remember watching it and being like, "This is." I think I was like eight or nine when it came out. I was like, "This is awful," uh, but I can't stop watching. You can't stop watching it because <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's Agarn it and uh, O'Rourke. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> Ming, I wanted to ask you, uh, what is your connection to Tony Goggles? Tony Gog. Oh, I, I mean, I've met him at a bunch of uh, horror conventions. Okay, because funny enough, and uh, I think uh, year, he produces award, the award ceremonies usually at the uh, NJ Horror Fest. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, last year, you were supposed to come to a golf course. Do you remember? Recall that? No. What's the story? <laughs> I can't really tell the story because the movie's not out yet, and it doesn't come out until. Um, supposedly June is okay. A golf course? Um, Why was I supposed to be on a golf course? You were gonna, you were gonna be um, in this movie that w that we just actually wrapped doing. Oh, a few really? months I, ago. I agree to everything. So just, I don't, I don't okay, know yeah, uh, I, <laughs> No one called me. I would have totally shown up on a he, golf uh, course at midnight in like the, in Wayne, New Jersey, or wherever. Yeah, uh, shameless got. plug for Ming. You want him at your bar mitzvah? Yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. You got an envelope needs opening. Ming's there. <laughs> yeah, I asked because it's so funny because I could have met you that day for yeah. the first time, but you had car trouble and you couldn't get here. I've, I haven't there. had car trouble in a while, so I don't know where. Who told you this story? Th this is what this is what uh, Tony told me. This said, never yeah, happened. Gonna, this never it. happened. It never happened. No, wow. my car's Ming, uh, Ming is calling out Tony Goggles am, as a liar. <laughs> I'm going yeah, to tell him that. He's, yeah, Tony, no, you're, you're a goddamn liar. You <laughs> lied to my face. Yeah, no, I drive a pretty reliable car. I don't remember ever agreeing to appear in a golf course. Maybe, so. maybe I don't know. Ming would have Ubered know. over for God's sake. It probably was the address. He might not have said what the place was. Yeah, no. If you know me, yeah, if you. I say I'm going to be somewhere. I'm there. Like I even if know. I had car drive, I would have Ubered over. So. I have no idea. Yeah. So uh, we can call uh, someone, them out. Somebody's somebody's not telling the somebody, truth. Somebody here. didn't tell me the truth. <laughs> What's <laughs> the? And of course Tony you're Goggles. saying it's Tony Goggles. Tell me about the movie. What did I miss out on? Uh, you missed out on some pretty fun stuff. Okay. <laughs> I don't think they're talking about that movie. Are I don't I even. Can't, I don't I even know if I agreed to this. First of all, I, so I, I can't. Just let and the record be shown. May I just say one thing? Nobody asked me. I mean, I, oh. yeah, Why, where, 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 where were you? You should have came in yeah, this right. place if he couldn't I, come. I guess I didn't kiss had, Tony Goggles' ass enough. <laughs> Maybe not. He, had car, he also had car trouble. <laughs> he had car <laughs> trouble that day, too. No. You guys yeah. were in the same car. Exactly. There's um, a marathon yeah, no, of Ghostbusters on. Yeah, I, wish, <laughs> that, I right. really wish I could say more about what you missed out on. Nick knows this. A scene over here. Oh, he yeah. was in one scene. He has knows nothing about what the movies. Yeah, no. If if you were gonna, it's uh, pretty damn uh, mysterious, by the way. And nice, nice to tease your yeah. people. And like, I'm not telling you what it's I about, but it, it was pretty freaking. He didn't give awesome. me the go ahead to talk about it because it's it's you know the film is getting. Um, the special effects are being, you know, locked down right now. Yeah, and totally cool. Over yeah. the next six months, there's going to be a lot more, I think, advertising for it. But I haven't been given the green light. Yeah, no problem. To not be able to to say anything. I can't. I wasn't I mean, asked to be in it, Mike. So right, no, that's I, fine. I, you know. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, but yeah, that being said, if you have a production or something, yeah, I I would love to come on. We have one one or two days. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I will forward the information. We have. Projects all the time. Okay, we're doing, yeah, we're doing. no, this absolutely. Is, this is like I've, um, they literally called me up, said, "Here, put this coat on." Read yeah, these lines. That, that <laughs> was, I wasn't me. Okay, <laughs> I, I've had times where I've been on set, and you know, I just kind of stay in character. Sure. So, like I have to sit in this one spot and do this one thing, but it's a small team. It's not like there's a big team sure. of everybody doing stuff. It's a small production, right. so. They're like, all right, now we got to set up and move all the lighting. I'm like, I'm only going to move if you tell me to move because it's a lot easier for me to just sit here. So I'll be sitting for like four and a half hours straight on set in this one spot with lighting being set up around me. Yeah. And I don't mind doing any of, any of that kind of stuff. I love working um, on the movies and I only the final minded productions it once. Are, are super fun. <laughs> when we had our intimate scene. Oh, yeah. dude, we, 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 had a, we were in a movie together called Sodomaniac. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, it's, it's like a, funny. it's like a, it's a um, legit movie. It's like a legit movie. Oh my okay, god! Not, it's, it's got it's like it's a, a real. It's been released porn, on DVD. So. Yeah. Okay, right. You sure, can, sure. It, it, it immediately was not. We got a lot of press out of it 
because Amazon ref- suddenly decided you would not be streaming it on their service. You couldn't stream it. So, of course, that's like, oh, I got to see this. They're not even going to let you see it. Right. You were able to, uh, it was available on Verizon when it came out. Yeah, you could watch it. Um, it's, it's, it's a vigilante superhero movie, but... And it's a very feminist movie. Like you wouldn't even believe it by the but the hero knowing, wears a butt mask. Yeah, the hero is the butt face killer. You can oh, actually dear. pull it up. I'm sure that there's plenty of stuff on it. I'm sure oh, there I'm, is. There's probably a lot of other things yeah, that seriously. show up on hey, that. Good yeah, job, Ming. Now you're on a, you a, an FBI that is watch list. A different type of. It's not a maniac. Maniac. Yeah, yeah. yeah come on, Maniac 21. Man. That was the one that that goes. There it is. The, uh, there's trailers and stuff like that. There you go. I, I sat Holy with Christ. Well, Talk about I sat with chili in my butt crack for two hours. Oh, yeah, lovely. the dog chased me for a week. Yeah, that was it. That was a that's um, gross and awesome. That was a long night. Remember, there were so <laughs> many people. Like we had like extra people on set that day too. Remember, we were th- like we, just guests. Yeah, there's on me the right set. there <laughs> before I die. Right here. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Like that pumpkin looks like an ass. <laughs> yeah. The butt face killer. Oh my god. <laughs> So you check it out. And Ron, it's, it's, Ron Jeremy was in Sodomaniac 3. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's Ron Jeremy. I, we got to tell Tony Goggles. <laughs> you guys shot a sequel three. in the past? You didn't tell me? Right? <laughs> time Talk travelers. about being uh, forward thinking backwards, yeah, right? Yeah, because Ron I, Jeremy does not look like that now. That's for damn sure. You know, it's the power right. of butts. Mm. But, um... <laughs> All right, oh, shout out to uh, Wild Eye, uh, what's it, refla- re- releasing? Yep. Wild yeah, Eye yep. releasing. They, uh, they released it. It's... Uh, uh, tell the story. Oh yeah, so the guy we had. Oh, I used to do a lot of working in Philly and stuff with music, and we had one of the guys made the soundtrack for it, and he defected to Turkey because he that's where his originally was from. So when he went there, he said he heard the music playing, and he was like, "Oh, I never let this out to anyone else." He goes in the backyard at this party, and they're playing the movie. They're like, you "Got to watch this American movie. It's insane!" And they're playing the movie in the middle of Turkey. <laughs> In, the, in someone's back backyard of a house. on a projector screen about a butt face killer. <laughs> it, it's wow! So it was like the number one release, like hit film in Turkey that it's, year. Well, right, Turkey yeah. and Italy. Well, he's got they like Goggles it. probably has so many uh, Turkish awards that he's unaware right. of <laughs> <laughs> accolades from them. Um, oh, I thought you had a McDonald's tie-in. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, why weren't there figures at yeah, McDonald's? Yeah, uh, and Happy Meals. Things. Hey, yeah. kids, get your Sodomaniac. Frozen Two or Sodomaniac now available. Yeah, I, I, I always, I always recommend this Which as a watch <laughs> because the title is. Obviously extreme, but the message in the movie is actually really good. And like the 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 outcome at the end, when you when you find everything out that you didn't know throughout the course of the movie, you're just like, damn, that's cool. Like, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but it, you know, it, it, it's it's a, it's a good watch. Not yeah. just not just because me and Nick were in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, check it out. It looks like it's on uh, YouTube, Google Play, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's I'm all sure over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place. Not Amazon, so no, number of places. You got six point five out of ten in IMDb. Not bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not bad. Mm-hmm. And I see, uh, you know, I, you're wearing a Toxie shirt, so I, I assume Dude. you're a fan of Trauma. Oh yes, sir. So I, <laughs> yeah. I did uh, one day on Lloyd's new movie, uh, Trauma Shitstorm. <sighs> um, shot that last year. Yeah, in Jealous. Brooklyn. It's the new movie. Yeah, uh, caught a screening of it. Uh, I guess about six months ago. It's uh, it's it's crazy trauma. It's uh, it's classic <laughs> Lloyd Kaufman. I love trauma, trauma but uh, that was that was fun. Yeah, it was trauma. fun to uh, it was it's it was uh, you know Jersey's first production company, and uh, it was fun watching Lloyd work for That's, sure. I love Toxic Avenger. My kids are like, or like, who's that on the shirt? Can we watch that Toxic. movie? I'm like. Maybe about 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> like year five. Little heavy for them. A lot of boobs in that movie. Yeah. Was, like, ah, so, show me your guts. And he reaches in and pulls the guy's guts out. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Um, you want to get back to the, the studio for a second? Sure. Because I know Ask we're running away. out of time. Go for um, it. So how... Walking in, this was very simple for you to set up, right? Like you just kind of walked in and were like, "Hey, and yeah, let's go." Put out the microphones and you were ready to go. So, yeah. how easy? How easy is it for somebody who wants to do this? And you know, they're in the area, they want to come drive twenty minutes and and do a podcast. Uh, how it's easy. easy yeah. You that? head online, go to sharedunivers.com, dot com, book a slot uh, online, and uh, yeah, you show up. There's an engineer here, and yeah, you, and you just record. So. Um, it really I mean, is plug and play. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, that's actually, what we uh, tried to do. Yeah, yeah. right. 
Yeah, you know, I, I mean, any show prep uh, production, you know, that's all up to you. If you want help, I mean, we'll obviously right. help you out. But, uh, you know, everyone kind of dictates the direction of their own show. Hmm. And, uh, when, you know, once you get going, it kind of, uh, you know, you, you settle into a pretty comfortable groove. Right. Uh, have your guests meet you here. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to have kind of a neutral location where you can invite. If you, have, if you do have a guest, an outside guest that you want to interview, uh, rather than like, hey, uh, all right, uh, come to my house. We're going to record in right. my basement right. or my bedroom or my kitchen. <laughs> or you know, Unless that's your thing. Unless yeah, that's what your podcast involves sure. around. Yeah, but if it's a roundtable discussion in your kitchen and that's like part of the show, then that's the show. But like I said before, bedroom time. having <laughs> dedicated actual space, now, it's, it's, a great, it's a brilliant idea to, to have it like this where you could just book time yeah. and go do your thing. And if you have like a twice a month podcast... You could just come do it here. And yeah, go absolutely. Do, edit it yourself, and and you're good to go. Or yeah. you so. can have us edit it for you. They, and, all right, yeah. full service. Yeah, One absolutely. of the things that I loved about this idea was that if you're doing if you're doing it in your house, like your laundry room, you're like, oh crap, I got to do laundry. You know, it becomes right, right. then it becomes a chore. You know, the mm-hmm. the whole podcasting thing but if you've got a destination where you can just go and not have to worry about all the right. ins and outs that's that's what makes this place it's like this is not this isn't a chore this is something i look forward to and people come in here and they they get to look around and there's this place has got a lot of eye appeal and it's that's the beauty of it is it's an, an artist in, in their studio because artists me myself personally when I set up all the stuff I want to do, I don't want to have to clean it all up. Mm-hmm. I want to have a dedicated area that I can leave all my art stuff out. Currently, I have a small space for that, but the lighting's poor. and It's a long story. But, you know, at my day job, I used to have a great spot with a great big window in front of me. And it was off to the side of where my actual work would be done. So I would set up all my art stuff mm-hmm. in the morning when I got to work. And just leave it out all day. And like when I would take little breaks here and there, I would draw in certain things, take my lunch break and draw. And then they moved us to this new building and I have literally nowhere to go. So <laughs> I'm just like, this sucks. But yeah, like I want to be at this level for what we get. Like, yeah, it's great. Just and the setup. Like you're saying, if you're in the laundry room and your wife's coming in to do laundry and you're just kind of like... The dryer's hey, on I'm in the background. I'm trying to podcast here. Yeah. And she's like, I'm trying to do the wash. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, if you wouldn't leave bacon strips in, in your underwear, we wouldn't be having this discussion. <laughs> bacon strips in the underwear. How many... Uh, Classic move. How many podcasts do you usually have coming through? Do you have uh, any, like, we, regulars? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I think we're recording, uh, like, 20... Uh, about 25, 26 a week. Uh, we've launched, we've helped launch like close to 50 shows at this point in the last two years. And uh, yeah, it's picking up. It's been pretty awesome. That's great. Have they had a good level of success because they are coming in here? Like, is, have any like kind of come in and done their podcasts and not really reached the level that they've been? Or because they've come in here, they've found that they've already been at a kind of a more... I don't want to say elite, but they're kind of more well off because they're coming in here to do the podcast. I mean, it depends on the topic. You know, some are more niche than others, but uh, we have we have a few that are poised to blow up. We feel yeah. Um, so lesbian Nazi hookers, you know, <laughs> stolen by UFOs. A little bit, little on the bit. next podcast. I don't know yeah. if that's necessarily niche. I would lo- I would totally I would totally I would totally listen to that one. Yeah, I, think so. I might even give them a free lesson. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We might have to do that as another channel. Yeah, I stole that from UHF. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would love the Conan the Librarian podcast. I, I'm surprised no one started that one yet. Yeah, Wheel I of Fish? To. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't you know the Dewey Decimal <laughs> System? <laughs> this book's late. Yeah. I'm writing too. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, I, thankfully uh, we're able to use some of our, uh, you know, larger than normal social media following to help the market as well. So. That's a that's an edge that I th- I believe we have over anybody else who might decide to do something similar. You mean steal our idea, Ming? Those bastards. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking at you. You did have someone there. steal your idea in this area because I was at Reboot over in Asbury Park when Kevin announced at the end of the quick stop, right? He has some sort of like podcast. It's a podcast theater, not theater, a studio, not, right? a studio. not a studio. So not it's studio. it's more like a kind of. It's a live podcast theater. It's a venue for podcasters. Uh, where so if they you want to do that live. and go on the road, like tell mm-hmm. them Steve, Dave, and all that, you just go to the theater and people can line in exactly. and yeah. to listen. Right. They got like 60 some odd seats in there. 
or so they're they're anticipating and you know yeah it's it's different than us so right so it's not competition it's more like no. it, it, it it's an extension together. yeah i uh yeah i mean we're at poison send our some of the people who started in here is like hey why don't you go perform live uh we there's a whole venue yeah for that where you can go sell tickets and uh get a taste of live podcasting yeah which, which... is a totally different animal but just as fun yeah it's well, having a live audience a is, is definitely yeah well you're performing at that yeah, point. yeah right. you're not totally just sitting different. around having a conversation you now have to have a little bit extra yeah. to provide for a viewing audience. Yeah. So. You have to entertain. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can't exactly. suck. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't, can't be boring. You, you can't also be boring. can't be There's Cindy no Brady where it's like, oh, the red light. Oh, no. You know, you you're, can yeah. suck. You don't want to suck. You right. do you not want to You don't want to bomb right. on stage. You don't exactly. want to go there on like free rotten egg night and, and yeah. bomb at the theater. <laughs> yep. You buy the eggs from the quick stop. Dozen egg night. Yeah. Why did Kevin institute that night? What's going on here? This sucks. That's what I'm eggs. But it's going to be cool because you're going to have the quick stop and then you're going to have the new RST video yeah. that's yeah. coming back. And then the Smodcast. And then the Smodcast. So it's literally it's... like a view askew like strip mall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised he doesn't put a movies right there and, you know, a little drive through. <laughs> Why not? At that point, why yeah. not? Is that, is that lot still abandoned across the street? No. No, the no. condos there. Condos. Oh. All these high-end condos over there. Yeah. Crack condos. Can you imagine yeah. if opening an actual <laughs> movies? That would be I would phenomenal. Yeah. I always wanted Kevin to rent the the place that Surf Taco now and just turn it into a movies. That would have been brilliant. But I mean, you know, the, the amount of uh, just fans showing up, I, I, it would probably be unruly because uh, it would be the only one. You yeah, know what I mean? true. Hey, if they bought yeah. something, then uh, All right. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was I was hoping, uh, and this could be in the near future where uh, you know they're doing a lot of pop ups now. There's the Saved by the Bell pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the uh, the double R from Twin Peaks. Uh-huh. Right. Get my um, like a movie muffin. Do a movies pop up. <laughs> yeah. Have it be like seventy five percent gift shop. Yeah. I mean, that would be what you probably need to do. I would imagine. I mean, you're gonna. There was that kind of foodie really going to sell? Uh, I mean, they are they getting, the, are they getting Dogma the out for Halloween? Because I know Dogma is kind of hard to get right now with the rights for like streaming and everything. Coming to America. We were talking about oh, 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 oh. the strip club scene on the way here. Yeah. Where you're just sitting there looking at Selma Hayek. That must have been a horrible day on oh, set. One of the greatest days of my life, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, currently Dogma's out of print on DVD. It's not yeah. streaming. Uh, tied up in Weinstein Company uh, legalese right Ooh. now, I believe, and that's why it's very hard to find. I have an autographed copy. Yeah, I would signed keep, by Ming you. Chen. I would, I would keep it. I would keep that. It's, uh, you know, it's it's worth a lot right now. I, I imagine at some it's point it's worth about one hundred and twenty-five uh, bucks. Yeah, really? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's been long out of print. And, Anyone um, want to buy a copy? I could sell my non-Ming Chen signed copy. <laughs> Oh, wow, look at that. Buy it now. Nice. Yeah, a couple, there are actually a couple out there for reason they're very reasonable. Wow. But it's uh it is oh, out of it is special edition. Well, it looks like the original version it sells a lot more than the uh Yeah, there are some uh where's where's our completed auctions here? There uh yeah, this is very hard to find though. So I mean you you can get one for a reasonable price, but Usually when are, I'm out at flea markets, I just buy all Kevin's movies. I just have a big stack of like doubles and stuff because I'm like, fuck it. Anyone ever wants it's to get working out? A, it's working out in our giveaway favor for the way. Right, for but our show. it's the same thing. Like you never saw Kevin Smith movies here. Mm-hmm. They're like, what are these? They're DVDs. Oh wow, that's that's what all DVD player. Physical <laughs> media. I'm so sad to see it dying off. I, I yeah. do not. Uh, you have a brothers in arms right yeah. uh, right to the to the right of you right here. Uh, so Mike loves physical actually. media. Left. I try to get everything <laughs> I can on physical media. I try to instill that into my son as well. I'm like, yeah. look, if it's only available digitally, we got to try to see if somebody's small third party company might have licensing rights to have a limited run limited run games talk to Ming Chen I get he, it all he the does time. piracy so it's uh, fine. I, I've been known to burn a DVD, been known to burn a DVD. Once once one one no, I'd like to have, know that I have something if I buy something mm-hmm. digitally I can't do anything with it mm-hmm. and you know and that's why I have a big problem even with Google Stadia coming out like I'm not going to be a fan of that because <laughs> so, if they go away so do all your purchases mm. So let's let's quickly plug um, where can people come to book? Um, they go to a shared universe uh, dot com. Yeah, That's, for sure. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook uh, at a shared universe, and uh, yeah, it's very easy. Go online, book it up, and uh, come and come and have fun. Podcast. If uh, you need a little instruction, uh, come take a class. Uh, usually, me and Mike are here to instruct that class. Sometimes you get both of us. And uh, yeah, well, 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 we're here to help everybody out. We, I love this medium. We're here to so believe much. You. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're, we're ready not, to believe I'm not, you. I'm, I don't steal stuff from people, so it's great. 
Yeah. I but might we, take that sweater. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> is a fantastic. quality sweater. Yeah. yeah, I think ultimately it boiled down to, uh, we, I mean, we've been having so much fun doing this in the last 10 years that we want to show everybody how much fun this is as well. And uh, we believe that once you, want, it's addicting. Once you once you do it once, you'll want to come back weekly and do it and podcast and release episodes. And, uh, you know, once you get that great feedback, it's like, oh, I heard your podcast. Uh, uh, you guys are great. Yeah, when people uh, recognize a, your great. voice. Yeah, they're like, "Hey, I listen to your podcast," and they're like, "What?" Oh, like, fair. boom, cool. yeah, awesome. And this is so professional that anyone yeah, who would absolutely. ever want to go to the next level, or even just figure out if you want to do a podcast, instead of going out and maybe getting your own microphone, just coming in here, yeah. experiencing it from people who've been doing it for ten years, it seems like just a great option. Yeah. And then again, if you're like a professional you know, option, if you're unable to set up and leave it set up, mm-hmm. this is a great place to yeah, come in. Absolutely. So. So Gentlemen, that, thank you for, yeah, for having great. us for this. Really appreciate it. Interview. Was thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks come. for being persistent. I mean, he's been calling me for the past like year and a yeah. half. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, where's Ming Chen? I'm like, yeah. I, uh, but Come back anytime. You, uh, you know where we are now. Absolutely. So, and you guys are not that far. So No. no. Well, just an hour drive, so yeah. it's nothing. And the traffic wasn't bad. Not on a Sunday. <laughs> not on a Sunday. Oh, you got me out of go to for groceries today. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah, where do we find you guys? We are on uh, YouTube. Just look up Yet the Show. It stands for Yesterday's Entertainment Tomorrow. Okay. And we're the best daily show meets SCTV satirical make fun of clickbait show you can find on YouTube. Amazing. I love it. <laughs> Anthony, right, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Awesome.